I wanted to say a few words about the sampling process and about sampling filters. Now, to sample, we don't need a filter. All we need is an ideal switch. So here we'd have the sampling clock. At some frequency, let's call it the sampling frequency. And that will convert our continuous time signal to a discrete time signal. Now, in order to recover our signal again, we would need some type of filter. So this is where filtering becomes important. If we have a low-pass filter, then that will enable us to recover our original um, continuous time signal again. So this is our recovered um, a recovered signal. So let's call that recovered signal, which is continuous in time. And if it's an ideal filter, and if the Nyquist criteria is obeyed, then the recovered signal should be identical to the original signal. Now, in some cases, if our original signal is not band limited, or if its bandwidth is higher than the um, uh, it's higher than twice the uh, sampling rate available. So, in other words, if we're unable to sample at twice the bandwidth of our signal, then sometimes what we need is another filter. So this additional filter would be to restrict the bandwidth of our original signal. So this additional filter isn't for recovery, this is to prevent aliasing. So we call this an anti-aliasing filter. And just to um, set it apart from this filter, we use the word pre, so it's a pre-filter, it's a pr filter that comes before sampling, whereas this comes after sampling. So we call this a post-filter. And it's also an anti-aliasing filter in the sense that if there was aliasing, then it can be removed or, or some part of the signal can be uh, recovered as a result of this filter. And there's another video that talks about that uh, specifically. So to summarize, when sampling, all we need is a switch, an ideal switch. To recover, we need a low pass filter. So that's recovery after sampling. Before sampling, if our signal isn't band limited, then we can band limit it using an anti-aliasing filter. So that the, 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 the job of this would be to band limit the signal to make it fit within the range of frequencies permitted by the sampling rate. So whatever the sample rate is, the cutoff frequency for the uh, low pass filter should be half that or it should be less than or equal to half. So the cutoff frequency should be less than or equal to the sampling rate divided by two. That's another way of saying that the sample rate should be greater than or equal to the cutoff uh, frequency times two. But in practice, in practice, we don't do that. We do that if we're trying to set a sample rate. But in practice, if we have a fixed clock, if we have a fixed sample rate, then in order for this to be an anti-aliasing filter, then we set the cutoff frequency in such a way to make sure that aliasing doesn't happen. So I hope you found that helpful.